Hi, hello. Hang on. I'm getting... I don't know why you guys are so close. Every time I think I have, like, the perfect setup. And, oh, my God. I also don't have very long arms, so we're going to... There you go. That's a little bit better. Um, hi, hello. I'm just making sure that I have all my notes correct because when I say that this entire case... Mm, I was like, you know, whenever you get so emotional hearing a story that it then just turns into rage, that's what, oh, hi, cat. Oh my God, you're here again. Wow. Hi. Okay. Again, I do have my, um, um, laptop set up so that I can see your messages as they're coming in. Um, today, so for those who don't know, today we're going over Ruby Frankie. It's a lot. So I do just want to preface this live by saying if you are easily triggered by situations of child abuse, um, starvation, neglect, torture, anything like that, um, please check in with yourself, you know, um, stop and come back if you, if you have to take breaks, you know, um, I know that when going through some of this information, I myself had to stop and take breaks. And some of, some of that information I will be sharing with you guys. Um, I'm hoping that none of it gets flagged because it's a bit rough. But I think I'll be able to explain it enough so that it's not um, too, <laughs> too fucked up. Okay. Um, but yeah, so... Like I said, um, this one's going to be a little unhinged because I have a lot of thoughts. And the whole reason why I opted to go for a live was because I do not have the patience to sit there and edit a million freaking things in one video. Um, I just, I don't have the patience for that. And so, and I know how I felt going, th like, going through all the information and doing all the research and everything, I, I mean, I am, like, days and days <laughs> into this, okay, um, and it just kept getting worse the deeper I got into it. I was, like, holy fucking shit, this is insane, um, and so, yeah, I just, I knew if I tried to keep it, like, short and snippy for, a, a regular episode, right? That I wasn't going to be able to actually express my genuine um, feelings and beliefs on this case. And um, I know a lot of people have covered it. Um, but as everyone knows, right, I myself am a survivor of abuse and torture. I lost my sister to it. And so cases like this tend to become very personal to me. And I tend to have very strong opinions. And I don't like censoring myself, you know, I made this platform, made this podcast so that I had a space to where I could just, I don't know why I look so pasty white right now, but anyways, um, I just wanted to have a space where we could talk about all of this shit, right? Um, because I feel like it, it's a topic of conversation that needs to come up. And too many people are uncomfortable with that, you know, um, but I tend to find comfort in the uncomfortable. So that's what we're doing today. Um, side note, I don't know if you guys see my cool ass fucking jersey. I got it from the John Elliott himself, Mr. Butt Devils. I'm obsessed. Okay, I told him I like him baggy. He delivered because this thing is like a fucking nightgown on me, but it is so comfortable. I'm not even joking. If you haven't checked out his store, Butt Devils, www.buttdevils.com, um, I highly suggest doing so. Okay. He's a super rad fucking dude. Um, has always been incredibly supportive from jump. Okay. Since the very beginning. Um, and he actually helped me with a lot of behind the scenes stuff he continues to support me. I feel like he deserves the business, right? So if you're in the mood for grabbing a cool shirt, a cool hat, you know, stickers, whatever, um, that's a really good small business to go support. 
Um, if I'm heavy breathing, it's because, again, it's freaking cold in here. Also, if I'm just, like, randomly gasping, it's because I'm sitting in the dark again. Um, my kids are downstairs doing Friday night camp out with my husband. So, y'all get me all to yourself. Gonna have to check them out. Please do. He's really cool. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. I thought of you so many times when this was reported. I actually got that a lot. A lot of people were sending it to me as it was happening. Like, have you heard this? Have you seen this? Have you, you know, um, have you looked into this case and everything? And I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Right. And I also didn't want to um, start all of this like as it was coming out because it was I was too emotional. Right. And I knew that everything was going to be very like rage charged. And I wanted to go into this with a level, a more level head, right? Because I feel like tonight it's still going to be fucked up because I'm still like raging mad about it. But I'm hoping that it'll get better, you know? Um, but anyways, heavy breathing because it's freaking cold in here. If I'm gasping, it's because my husband has his uniform hung up on the guest bed frame and it looks like a person, standing on the bed. And so every time I look that way, I'm like, oh my fucking God, it scares the shit out of me. Um, and I just had like the best meal of my life. You know, whenever you eat something so good and you're like, holy fucking shit, I can't fucking breathe. Yeah. That's, that's what's going on right now. Um, I, for those who are interested, I had a burrito bowl that everything made at home from scratch. It was fucking banging. Um, not that you guys care. But yeah, anyways, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. If I get sidetracked, I'm sorry. I am drinking. It's old, but it's not that old. Okay. Um, old as in like was made a couple hours ago and it's incredibly fucking watered down. Um, iced coffee. Because there's uh, after this, I have to go like hang out and watch scary movies with my husband. Okay, so. I'm trying to keep all my energy going. I'm also super shaky, though, because caffeine and me at night don't mix. Um, so if I feel if it seems like I'm just like squirreling all over the place, my bad. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started. So for those who don't know, Ruby Faint. Can't even say the bitch's name right. Your food always looks amazing. Oh, thank you. I actually really appreciate that. I am obsessed with cooking okay so we do care your food does always look great glad you got your base on before you got your thoughts on thank you oh my god I love that now I'm like teasing over here um but yeah okay so for those who don't know Ruby Frankie is a fucking kind sorry Ruby Frankie is in fact that but she's also a family or was a family blogger on YouTube and um she had the channel Eight Passengers and um it was just like family shit they sorry not sorry yeah right that's my thoughts um she posted like just family content i don't know family bloggers, family vloggers, whatever they call themselves. I don't understand it. I don't understand like just having a camera in your kid's face all day. And also like just the amount of work that would go into that, right? Because I know my kids, um, I've got little kids and I've got toddlers. Um, and it just, it, like the thought of having a camera in their face all the fucking time. I'm sorry, but sometimes my kids are like absolutely insane. So I don't, I don't understand forcing yourself to have that kind of a workload because I, and maybe I'm just, maybe that's just it. Maybe I just don't get it and you know, whatever, but I'm not a big fan of them. I also am not a big fan of, especially in today's world, having really personal aspects of your life online. Um, and I don't know, for, well, for those who are on my Instagram, especially, I'm sure you've noticed that in the past like year and a half, 
I have really like buckled down on not sharing my kids. You'll see them on my stories occasionally. Um, but it, when it comes to like actual posts that I make of them, I, I put it on my close friends list. I don't have it on my public page anymore. I went through and like weeded people out on my Facebook and so my face and my Facebook is super shut down, super private. And I just, it just got to the point where I was like, even though nothing was happening with my own children, I was seeing so much of it elsewhere, like the, the Ren Eleanor situation. And that is one that I plan to go over at some point. I just need to do my research on it um, because I like to come with facts so that people can't question me on things. Um, but yeah, so I just, I don't know. It just wasn't sitting right with me anymore. And it just wasn't something I wanted for my kids, you know, and I'm big on one thing I did notice that infuriated the fuck out of me with all of this, um, with this eight passengers channel was it seemed like she really exploited embarrassing moments for her children. Now, when I think of embarrassing things, that my children have done the last thing on earth that I think of is, Hey, let me go share it with anyone and everyone who's willing to fucking listen. How incredibly fucked is that? You know, like you've got this poor child who is experiencing life for the first time. Right. And you're sitting here posting all their embarrassing moments online. That is fucking traumatizing. I like, I think about how, my adopted parents would go and tell family members about dumb shit or like blast my ass online. I still get embarrassed about the fact that my adopted dad still has the post up on his profile put with a bolo out for my arrest. Okay. <laughs> like he still has all of that shit out in the open. Like Cassie is a runaway. If you let her into her home, you're harboring a fugitive. Blah, fucking blah, 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 blah. I went camping with my friends, okay? And fun fact, my uncle's, my uncle knew where I was the entire time. I had contact with him the entire time. That should tell you how shitty my fucking dad was. That my own uncle, his brother, my adopted uncle, was like, yeah, I'll keep your secret. Like, go have fun with your friends. You deserve to do that. He knew where I was the entire time. And then when I got back, my dad responded with having me arrested and then thrown in a psych ward. So, you know, you live and you learn. But that shit fucked me up, okay? I don't have a relationship with my, bio, with my adopted dad. And that moment in time played a very big role in it. So, you know, it fucks your kid up. Why would you fucking do that shit? those kids were exploited no privacy is torture yeah exactly exactly it's fucking cruel to do that shit to your fucking kids um so anyways she's 42 wife mom and from utah now i try my very best to be as open-minded as possible when it comes to different religions and beliefs and stuff like that. But I am noticing a very significant tr trend when it comes to um, Mormons and um, Baptists, more specifically Southern Baptists. Um, I feel like they're all fucking unhinged. I have yet to meet somebody who considers themselves a Mormon or somebody who considers themselves a Baptist that is actually level-headed and that is not me shitting on Baptists as a whole or Mormons as a whole. I'm sure there are plenty of lovely ones out there. I'm saying that personally, I've never fucking met one. And I will be shocked the day that I do. Um, <clears throat> but they were a part of the Latter-day Saints. And you can Utah itself has a lot of marital and fam familial issues all around, it seems like. Yeah. Seriously, like a lot of like fucked up cases seem to come out of fucking Utah and you would have to be blind to not see the correlation there. I, and I, I know that that triggers a lot of people. I know that that gets a lot of people upset. But the reality is, is that the church, right, has hurt a lot of people. And it's not just Mormons. It's also Catholicism and other shit. You know, the, the church all over the place doesn't matter what religion it is, 
is known for hurting people. And there are good church-going people out there. I can attest to that. You know, I know plenty of incredible church-going people. I am not a church-goer, nor do I believe in any of that shit. I used to, um, until I just kept getting fucking abused and kept having fucked up shit happen. And eventually I was like, fuck that guy. You know, that's my personal beliefs though. If you believe in a religion or, you know, whatever, that is you. And I respect that, right? As long as you're not being a piece of shit to other people and you're not using your religion to harm other people. Um, but I do see a correlation between religion and child abuse. Um, and it's called religious abuse. It's a thing. Look it up, you know. Um, but yeah, so they're from Utah. And getting into this, I will say that the, her entire reasoning for a lot of this was religion, was God. She was using God to um, punish and push a narrative and torture and abuse and starve her children. Um, so getting into it, I found out that it was actually back around 2015 when she started her channel vlogging family life. Um, and it wasn't just her, it was also her and her husband, Keith, and then their six kids. So one thing I do want to note is that although all of this covers Ruby Frankie, we're not, that's not, I'm not intentionally leaving out Jody Hildebrand, which was her partner in crime or Keith, because I feel like Keith actually is getting away with not really having any heat on him, but you have to understand that he was there for all of this happening. He witnessed all of this happening and he did nothing, his own children. Um, he watched his wife do this shit to his children and publicly shame and humiliate them and did nothing about it. Eventually, did he file for separation? Yes. But what was the catalyst for that? You know, it went on for fucking years and it took him that long to say, okay, I'm fucking done and I don't want to fucking deal with this anymore. You know, he's not entirely innocent here. And I know it's, it can be a slippery slope when it comes to, um, talking about bystanders and stuff like that, but to not say something is to agree with what's going on. You know, silence is, is an answer. And especially when it comes to your children, you mean to tell me that you watch this person do all of this shit to your kids, your flesh and blood children that have your blood running through them. And you thought, mm, not my business. Fucking wild. Absolutely fucking wild. Because let me tell you something. There have been many times, right? As parents, we all fuck up. We all do shit that we're like, in the heat of the moment, we're like, yep, this is normal. This is okay. You know, there was one time my son, he was playing in my cabinet. He got a hold of my glass bowls in the kitchen cabinet, dropped them and glass spilled air everywhere. Right. I immediately start panicking and I'm like, oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking God. So instead of, and in, I was, I was just panicked. There was glass all over my fucking floor. Um, and he's like right in the middle of it. Right. And so the whole time I just immediately, I started crying. Right. Because that's something that I do happen to do when I am incredibly overwhelmed. I just start crying. Um, and it's when I'm happy and when I'm upset, you know, like, and I hate that. I hate that when I get angry, I fucking cry. Um, but I feel like it's my body's way of like stopping me from like doing other shit, you know, um, not when it comes to my kids, but when it comes to like other people in general. Um, but I was panicked. I started crying and the whole time I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I told you to stay out of there. I told you to stay out of there. Like, and I was just like panicking. Right. And I pick him up and I move him and he's like, he's two. Right. So he wants to walk and stuff like that. And 
I'm like, no, stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. And so he's crying now, right? Because I'm freaking out. And I'm like calling, you know, like somebody grab me a broom. Somebody grab me. Like I was just fucking panicking. And I explained, my husband was at work when all of this happened. I explained the situation to him. And he was like, oh my gosh, that must have been so scary for you. But imagine how scary it was for him. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He didn't get cut. He didn't, he, he had no cuts on him. He wasn't bleeding or anything like that. And he was like, no, but he watched you panic. And at no point during all of that panic, did you stop and say, I'm not upset with you. It's okay. You know, accidents happen. He's like, instead, you just like freak the fuck out. And so, and it's true. And then I was like, oh my fucking God. And so, you know, I, that night I picked my, I was like, I'm so sorry. Mommy freaked out. You know, mommy was really scared and stuff like that. And you know, whenever I do that a lot with my kids, my husband does that a lot with his kids and like, well, our kids, my kids are his kids, you know? So, um, but yeah, and it's just like, you need somebody there to check you. Right. And I don't feel like it's like you have a good partner if your partner is willing to just let you do whatever the fuck you want, whatever the fuck you want. I feel like a good partner will check you when you're getting fucking crazy. Your partner will check you. And um, so, Keith, what the fuck were you doing? You know? Um. Anyways, I hate the anger cry. Girl, same. Oh, my God. It frustrates me. so. But the weird thing is, is like I only angry cry when it's somebody that I give a shit about. Other than that, I'm just, like, full-blown fucking, like, uncontainable rage. Um, and it's not healthy, okay? I'm in therapy. Let's not forget that. Um, and that is one of the things that I'm working on is just, like, my rage towards people. Um, it's mostly internalized, right? I'm able to, like, rein it in, you know? Um, but I definitely go home. And I'm, like, in my head, like, fuck that fucking bitch. And I'm just, like, raging. It's part, it's also part of, like, having bipolar. Um, but <laughs> let me tell you, sometimes it's bad. But, yeah, I only, I only angry cry when it's with people that I give a shit about. Other than that, it's almost like, I'm about to fucking out myself here. It feels like, like, when your adrenaline's pumping and... You're just like releasing all of your rage. It's like an adrenal. It's like a like a high almost. Like I find enjoyment out of it, which again is part of the whole having bipolar thing, right? You get like an adrenaline rush off of those things, and it's like it feels good to your brain. Your brain is like, yeah, do more of it, right? Um, and again, it is something that I'm working through, but like. One of my toxic traits is, especially if it's somebody I don't give a fuck about, I will not back down. I will not back down. And it used to be where if I couldn't get them to cave verbally, I would get them to cave physically, right? Um, I had no shame in fighting people, men or women. It didn't fucking matter. Um, I was not going to back down. Now that I'm a a responsible adult and a mother, you know, I understand that, like, that shit can get me sent to jail, right? And if, but if need be, I know that I'm still capable of it, okay? Um, But I am, (laughs) okay, I feel like I'm, like, sitting here trying to, like, get you guys to understand it probably, I probably sound absolutely fucking psychotic right now, and that's okay. Shit fucking happens. Um, anyways, um... So I looked into her schedule, right? Like her posting schedule. At one point, this lady was posting five days a week at 6 a.m. every day. So, uh, okay. And you can schedule. um, You don't get it. Good, good. I just like, I'm like, oh my God. Sometimes my mouth just talks too much, you know? Um, But yeah, so this lady was posting five days a week at 6 a.m. every day. And like, I know you can schedule posts, right? You can schedule uploads, videos, what the fuck ever. You can schedule all of it. But five days a week? Who the fuck has the time for that? You mean to tell me that you are a mother, a stay-at-home mom at that. You're a stay-at-home mom to six kids and you have the time to post 
five, you, uh, not only that, not just like post five days a week, but you had the time to film five days worth of episodes. Insane. Absolutely fucking insane. Like where, where is the quality time with your children? You know, like I, I don't fucking know. Okay. And then I did go on to, um, the website where you can track people's subscribers and stuff like that. She had last left off at, um, 2.2 million subscribers. So this is millions of people tuning in five days a week to watch her fucking videos. And uh, this is where I get so frustrated because I talk a lot about being educated on the reality as a child abuse and knowing the signs and things like that. But I get frustrated here because if you go back and watch some clips from her old videos, the signs were there making her son sleep on a bean bag for what was it? It was, um, it's in here somewhere. It was months. It wasn't just like a couple days, a couple weeks. It was months laughing about it. Disgusting. Some of the things that she would talk about, um, as far as like punishment with her children, disgusting things that personal things that she would talk about with her kids. Absolutely fucking terrible. And this, this started in 2015. It's 2024. And it wasn't until 2023 that she finally went to jail. And I'm just like, I'm appalled. I'm like, how the fuck did this go on for so long? You know, and I know that there was like the Reddit snark page and things like that. But like, and I know that a lot of people don't take those seriously, right? Because some people in there are fucking unreal. They're crazy fucking people. They're the same people that will blow your shit up, doxing you. Like, they're insane. Okay, Reddit is like a whole nother fucking world. But to know that this went on for years and millions of people are watching this and nobody's saying, hey, fucking wait a minute. Like, what the fuck did you just say? Or what the fuck did you just do? Like, what? Wild. Wild. Um... So from what I gathered, it was actually in 2020 when people started um, kind of questioning her parenting and that was due to the weird punishments that she like proudly talked about on her channel. Um, I, yeah, and see, and then in what, in, in, I put a side note, I put on that thought, why did it take five years for people to finally start picking up on the fact that she was treating her children like show ponies? And I still agree with that sentiment. I wrote that while I was doing my research <clears throat> as like a little note. But like a counselor from the wilderness camp, they sent their oldest child to said that Ruby was totally focused on the film crew, not reuniting with her son after six weeks. Insane. See, I didn't know that. That's nuts. We made people so desensitized now to the social media. Unfortunately, it doesn't. To these children in favors. Yeah, exactly. I feel like now everything is so normalized that we just forget, like, wait a fucking minute. That's abuse. I feel like I have issues where when I see, I just don't respect family vloggers at all, period, you know, because I just, I don't see it as something um, that is safe for children, I, especially when you consider how much time is committed to that. Let kids be kids, you know? Get the fucking camera out of their fucking faces, you know? Um, but yeah, it just, like... Her children were not her children, it seemed like. it. They're just, like, they were just... I don't even know. I don't even know the correct word for it. Um, and I had actually put in here that during that time <coughs> was whenever I had joined TikTok... And one of the things I remember going viral at that point um, was hearing about a lady. Um, somebody on TikTok was like covering a story or whatever. And I was hearing about this lady who had um, a YouTube channel and a very big family. She was from Utah, whatever, whatever. And that her son had been banned or grounded from his room. And at that time, I remember thinking like, what? You know, and when I did a deep dive on it, 
found out that he was supposed to, um, or that he was forced to sleep on a beanbag for seven months. Seven months. And I'm pretty sure this happened to Chad. Um, and I remember sitting there thinking like, oh, surely this lady's gonna like go to jail, you know, because that was the time where this is my first time hearing about her. I was like, oh, okay, let me go check out her YouTube, right? I went through so many of her fucking videos and I was like, abuse, abuse, neglect, abuse, you know, because when you work this closely and when you also have experience being abused, you see the signs and it's easier for you to pick up on things and go, oh, yeah, red flag. That's not cool, you know. Um, and I actually remember reporting her account because it was full of abuse and neglect. And it but it was like kind of like tossed in there um, where it wasn't like the main focus. Right. But it was enough to. For me to notice, you know, and um, but it would just be like she was so casual with it. And maybe that was what made it easier for people to just kind of overlook it was it was like, oh, shit, that's not normal. But then she would change subjects and like other shit would happen, you know, in the video and it would just go on. And so I'm just like, no, I don't fucking know. They were objects. She can mind a hundred percent just objects. Her sisters were vloggers too. A fucking course they were. Is it like a thing to be Mormon in Utah and just have massive platforms? I feel like everybody that I follow that is like a big, like big influencers, right? I try not to follow a lot of influencers. Um, but everyone has their niche, right? Um, I feel like they all come from fucking Utah, which no fucking hate to them. But like, is there just, is, is there just like a, the group you got to join in fucking Utah? Like, I don't know. I feel like almost all of the, because one of the people, um, I follow is Turtle Creek Lane. I don't know if y'all know who she is. She's an old white lady, um, who I'm pretty sure is Mormon. I know her daughter-in-law is Latter-day Saints, so it would only make sense. They all have very big families, um, and I found her because of all of her, like, crazy house decorating. Like, if you guys have not seen that shit, you need to go fucking check it out. Like, every time the holidays come around, I'm like, girl, what's next? What are you going to do this year? And every year, I'm like, there's no way she's going to top last year. Bullshit. Yeah, she does, and it's fucking wicked. It's so fucking cool. Um, but yeah, like, and... They are, you can tell, like, very godly families. However, it just seems to be a trend, you know? And it's actually, now that I think about it, kind of fucking weird. You know how they always say, like, oh, people in Hollywood, like, sign their souls over to the devil to become famous and shit like that? Like, all the conspiracy theories around that. Maybe there's something in Utah that we just don't know. But instead of, like, the devil, it's, like, I don't know, alien probing. Who the fuck knows? Um, that definitely needs to be looked into, though, now that my brain is, like, connecting the dots. And I have to change subjects from this because otherwise I will go down that rabbit hole and we'll just be sitting here all night, like, rabbit holing Utah and family influencers. Imagine it's all just a cult. See, oh my God, can't you imagine? It's like the whole state of fucking Utah. Would it surprise me though? Absolutely not. Like, and I feel like they're all the exact, no offense to anybody from fucking Utah, but I feel like they're all the exact same people. Like when I've, okay, first of all, I've never met anybody from Utah. I only see them online. I don't doubt it at this point, seriously, but like... I feel like they just, like, like, they come out of a factory, like a Willy Wonka factory or something. Like, just, like, they're the exact same person. It's the same people just being over. And maybe that has to do, you know, with um, the lifestyle, you know, with Mormons and stuff like that. Um, I was going to say I've never met anybody from Utah and I've never met a Mormon. But that's a lie. Yeah, I have. My mother-in-law's um, old boss was a Mormon. And... You know what? Maybe they are fucking cold. Because now I'm sitting here there and I'm like, oh my fucking God. Yeah, he did this weird shit too. And 
somebody that she worked with there got hired at his office because they were like, they went to the same church. And even though this bitch had zero fucking experience and was like a full on, like full blown alcoholic, she still worked at this office because like they went to the same church and they had the same. Oh, one night when, when like the hypomania is taking over, I'm going to do a fucking, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there's got to be like deep in the depths of Reddit. Somebody's got a conspiracy theory on this. Guarantee it because there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. I, new conspiracy theory. Utah as a whole is a cult. You heard it here first. Oh my God. Imagine that would be fucking wild. Anyways, going back, um, it was in these videos, things that I noted, right? After like going back and watching little snippets, things that I saw in these videos that were being boasted to everybody was um, uh, her bragging about withholding f- food um, and not just like sweets and sugar and, you know, shit that is bad for you, red dye 40, whatever, like actual food, withholding food from her children. Um And I actually put in like all caps, which is fucking abuse in case you didn't know, um, and starvation, right? Um, and this entire time she's like sharing this shit on the internet for millions to see. And that's what I'm saying that she's making videos talking about, um, yeah, well, they weren't allowed to eat or, you know, whatever they had to fast. And I feel like that was her way of getting by with it. Right. Um, And you have to watch out, especially with these um, religious channels. You have to watch out for the um, not trigger words, but like the like the I don't even know, like the special words like. um, God, what I don't even know. I don't know how what to call it, but just like words that they use to almost disguise their. um, uh abuse that they're doing right and so in this case she brought up fasting a lot but then whenever you sit there and you look at the age of these children it's like absolutely not should these children be fasting that's insane and almost always this fasting was happening as a punishment so it's like okay you're openly admitting that you were starving coded words there you go um you're openly admitting to starving your child under the guise of religious fasting. Absolutely disgusting, you know? And it's like, things like this, again, I have a trained eye in this shit because not only have I gone through religious abuse myself, right? Um, But I've also done a lot of time learning about child psychology and child advocacy and working with people, you know, like evidential learning and Dr. Kellogg and you know, putting in all of this work to learn about all of this, to help other people learn about all of this, right? So you have just hidden meanings behind things. And the whole fasting thing was a huge red flag to me. And um, so she's sitting here in these videos talking about how she's starving her child. And because, and that is one thing... And I know some parents will be like, what the fuck, Cassie, you know, and it's okay. You don't have to agree with my stance on it. I will never, ever agree to food being used as a punishment. It is number one, probably not number one rule in my house. Number one rule in my house is no physical discipline. Um, But it is in the top five that food will never be used as punishment in this house. Um, you don't want to eat. I, I am a short order chef. I know a lot of parents, a lot of parents out there are like, oh, they either eat what I'm making or they don't eat at all. I don't do that shit. I don't. Because I understand that everybody has different taste buds and people like different things, you know. I understand that the burrito bowls that I made for me and my husband tonight, three of my four children would eat my oldest, he's not going to fucking eat that shit. I will make him whatever the fuck he wants within reason, right? Like you're not going to skip dinner and have a fucking cupcake, you know, 
but when it comes to making meals and like I, I encourage them to try food. That's why my three youngest ones absolutely love whatever the fuck it is that we're eating. But my oldest, he's very particular about things that he eats and I have catered to that his entire life and I will continue to fucking cater to it because my main concern is that he's eating and that he's healthy. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It does not bother me. It takes an extra five minutes. Nine times out of ten, he prefers to have a sandwich over, you know, whatever it is like tonight, a burrito bowl. He did not want it. He wanted noodles and hot dogs. Okay, you're getting your carbs and you're getting your protein. Good. Done deal. They, you know, eat veggies for snacks, including my oldest. And so veggies and like fruits and stuff like that. And then, you know, regular snacks, whatever. But food is never and will never be used as punishment in my house. I don't fucking believe in that shit. I never will believe in that shit. I will never defend that shit. Okay. I am the person who will tell you if your kid won't eat what you make for dinner, you make them something else. You make sure that they're eating and don't be fucking petty about it, right? Like Betty and Ruben growing up, if for some reason, um, you know, we didn't want what they were making, which was rare, I feel like, um, they would make us eat a can of hot sardines. And as you can imagine, I fucking hate sardines now. Um, yeah, just smothered in hot sauce. It was fucking disgusting and fucking atrocious. Um, I'm not going to do that shit to my kids. You don't want to eat what we're having. I'm not going to make you eat something I know you fucking hate. That is the dumbest fucking thing. I will give you whatever else you want to fucking eat as again, as long as it's within reason and it's no sweat off my back. My children are happy and healthy and they know at our house, in our kitchen, you eat whatever the fuck you want. No one should ever think that's an exception. Exactly. And you, it, you would be surprised how many people think that it's okay to let your child starve, then feed them. Especially school-age children. Imagine sending your child to school with an empty belly because you're so high up your own fucking asshole that you can't, like reason with your child and be like you know what I understand that you don't always like adult food let me make you something else imagine being that high up on a fucking horse oh my god I could never anyways um what else did I put here oh yeah so I did put in here a note saying um that she had one at one point had sent one of her children to a a wilderness camp for troubled teens now I know that there's a fuck ton of documentaries out on this shit and by fuck time, I think I mean like one to three, possibly, potentially, not sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to check my... Okay, hang on, I have to respond to a message real quick. I have a baby shower right now and I'm trying to, uh, not right now and not for me. Um, I have a baby shower with a friend for a friend tomorrow and, um, my other friend and I are conversing back and forth to make sure that we don't accidentally buy the same thing. Um, I'm so excited. I made them a birth board and everything, you know, babies, they get me all excited. I don't want any more. I'm done. I've had enough. Um, but yeah, so I did put in here that about the whole wilderness camp for troubled teens things. Now, so many people have done incredible deep dives on those and the documentaries are horrifying, you know, um, at least from what I can tell from the trailers and then reviews that I've seen, um, by people who have watched these things. They're on my to-do list. Um, I am waiting for my husband to go on his training cycle, um, because I usually have a later night schedule when he's gone for months on end like that. Um, because it's my only time to feel sanity. So um, that's usually when I watch all the documentaries and conspiracy theory videos. And man, that's when the last time he was gone for a training cycle. That's when I watched that JFK one. Holy shit. You had me convinced. I was convinced. I was like, yeah, you're right. 
you're right. It was the driver. You're right. Um, I'm an aunt to be times five. I can't wait for August. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, no, the JFK one, I was like, you're not convincing me otherwise. You mean to tell me because the, and I watched it on Tubi. Okay. Now for those who know Tubi, you know, Tubi's got some weird fucking shit on there. Okay. And on top of it all, I watched it with my father-in-law. Okay. Cause he's like into like weird fucking movies. I don't fucking know. But he was like, Hey, I know you're into conspiracy theories. Fucking watch this shit. So then I did. And I was like, Oh my God, that would explain why she was like, it looked like she was trying to crawl out of the back and everybody's saying like, Oh, she was trying to gather his brain particles to put them back in his head. But I'm like, does that make sense though? You know, not to me, not to me. Um, so yeah, I, I probably, I don't want to get like fucking laser beamed through my fucking window right now, but, um, I'm not saying I believe, but you know, kind of, you know, especially because of the whole, like, you can't, or like it all happened. It had to all happen before they reached the bridge. Hmm. Mm, Pieces aren't clicking there, you know? Um, I love conspiracy theories. I love it because they scare me. I love being scared, except what I don't enjoy is like the aftermath where I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep and it's like four o'clock in the morning. And yeah. Oh my God. And now that I'm saying that, I have to tell you guys, okay, side note, I have to tell you guys about this fucked up dream that I had last night. It was fucking terrible. I woke up in fucking sweats. Okay. It was a paranormal dream. I hate those. I've had, I want to say two paranormal dreams and both of them have fucked me up. This was my third. Which scared the shit out of me because I usually only have paranormal dreams when I'm pregnant. And I was like, uh, absolutely fucking not. Took a test and everything. I'm good. I'm fine, guys. I am not down with the sickness. Um, but I was, I was stressing there. Um, yeah, I, it was like, oh, okay, this one sound fucking wild. It was like in my body, there was like a war going on, right? like a million people inside my body. I was just like laying there paralyzed. And, um, it was like demons versus humans in some weird trippy ass fucking shit. But then the weirdest part of it all was like in my dream, somebody was telling me like, you need to run, you need to run, you need to run. They want your soul. They want your soul. And I was like, Oh my fucking God. So then, you know what, like you're running in your dreams and it's like, slow motion and you're like oh my god that's exactly what was happening I I woke myself up going (laughs) oh my god I woke myself up going ah like (laughs) because in my dream I was like screaming I was screaming at the top of my fucking lungs but like I woke myself up going ah like it was fucking bad And then I roll over to check the time, right? Because my husband gets up at, like, 4.30 in the morning. Again, he's in the military, so, like, miss me with that shit. Um, But I checked the time because I was like, oh, my God, what if I just woke him up? You know, it's fucking 2 o'clock in the morning, and so I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's the middle of the night. Now, when I wake up in the middle of the night, immediately I start fucking panicking. I... I just hate it. I hate being up in the middle of the night because then I get like the heebie-jeebies that like the spooky people are just floating around and, you know, I don't like it. I hate it. Um, And so I'm like laying there. My eyes are still closed, right? Because I'm still processing that there's still sound coming out of my fucking mouth, right? And so I'm laying there. I'm like, ah. And like half of me is still in dream world and the other half of me is still here and all I'm hearing is like, run they want your soul run and I'm like uh you know it was fucking terrible and my dog at this point he sleeps at both of our dogs they sleep in the bed with me um and I'm sure 
well, no, my husband doesn't hate it. Otherwise, he would say something about it. Whatever. My dogs sleep in bed with me, okay? They sleep at the foot of the bed. They always have. They always will. My big dog, Scout, he, like, woke up from a dead sleep and just, like, looked at me like, bitch, what the fuck are you on? He was so confused. And, like, I got confused because there was somebody, um, like, in my back. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. And, you know, whenever you struggle realizing, like, coming out of a sleep, like, what's real and what's not real. I was terrified. I was so, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to turn over and there's going to be somebody and, oh, I had the heat. I'm sitting in a dark room right now. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm going to roll over. I'm going to get the heavy fucking TVs. It was my toddler. He had, I guess, woken up in the middle of the night and crawled into bed with us. I was just like, and the whole time I'm like panicking, panicking, like full on holy fucking shit, holy fucking shit, I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna turn around, there's gonna be a fucking ghost right there. I was like, it was fucking bad, okay? I just don't fuck with the paranormal. I mean, I do fuck with it, but not personally, you know? Like, I want to hear other people's paranormal shit, but I don't want to experience paranormal shit because the dreams that I have had are enough. And I feel like every time I have a paranormal dream, it's like a sign that I need to cleanse my house again or myself. I don't know. I've also been having a really rough week to the point that even my therapist was like, I feel like you're kind of backsliding a little bit. So that was great. Um, came home and like cried in the fucking shower. I was like, Oh, this is so nice. This is so great. What a great fucking day. And like everything happened on the same day too. Um, I had found out some stuff about my son and I was like, Oh my God, how much more, am I going to have to split myself up? You know, like this fucking sucks. And then I was talking to my therapist and then she ends my appointment with that. And I was like, great. Love that. It's not enough though to be like, oh, like you're fucking up. It's just a little bit, you know, which is to be expected, you know, struggling but stuff. I have recurring paranormal dreams since I was very little. I hate it. And they're so hard to... Yeah, seriously. And they feel so real. They feel like you're sitting... Like, it feels like real fucking life. I also... No, I don't think I should share it with you guys. No, I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, So, I jokingly tell my husband that I see the future. Right? And before you're like, bitch, I know. That sounds fucking insane. But I t- I'm telling you, I have dreams of shit... And then I'll forget that I've had dreams of shit and then until it happens in real life. And I'm like, oh, my God, I fucking dreamed about this. I swear that's what deja vu is. I feel like deja vu is just you dreaming of something happening and then it's actually happening and it's your brain going, wait a minute, we've been through this before. Yeah, in dreamland, you know, there's got to be a conspiracy theory on that, too. Again, I love me a good conspiracy theory. Anyways. Moving on, um, as I was saying, these troubled teen camps, they're notorious for abusing and neglecting children in the name of disciplining, and there's actually, people have made compiled lists of kids who have fucking died at these wilderness camps, right? Um, because they're being disciplined to the point of fucking death. Um, and like I said, there's documents and stuff like that that you can watch on it. I'm pretty sure... I'm not doing anything suspicious down here, guys. I don't know if that's, like, a fuzz on my pants or if it's a hole in one of my favorite pairs of fucking leggings. If it's a hole, I'm gonna be fucking mad. Um, these are those, like, crossover ones from Aerie. Love them. Very fucking expensive for fucking leggings, considering that, um, I usually buy, like, the really soft ones from Walmart for, like, what is it? seven fifty five or something like that? I don't fucking know. Super cheap. These are not super cheap, but they're so comfortable. So comfortable. I love these and shamefully the Fabletic ones. I don't buy them anymore, but the ones that I do have, I actually do enjoy them. I will admit. Um, anyways, fast forward to 2022. The Frankies get separated. This is when um, Kevin is like, yo, bitch, you're crazy. Leave me alone. Um, and then Ruby takes the channel down um and then from there goes on to become a supposed mental health coach at a business that her and 
enter Jody Hildebrand have called Connections. Um, this place is apparently... It was. It started with the channel, I'm pretty sure. And Jody Hildebrand was allegedly a fucking counselor through this. Um... And they made a joint Instagram account called Moms of Truth, where they offered parenting classes, which you're joking. What a fucking joke. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You're joking. That goes to my head all the fucking time. Um, but yeah, they offered parenting classes. Um, I just thought that's kind of ironic. Um, and it was reported that the neighbors and the oldest Frankie daughter... I'm trying not to include names here because, you know, they're kids and they don't deserve that. They, I just want them to find peace. Um, so their oldest daughter, who was a college student at this time, had actually called authorities to check on the other Frankie children because Ruby was often leaving them home alone. Which, again, absolutely fucking wild. The most honest of the words to ever come out of Jody's mouth is that Satan wanted her... As his bride. Yep. Um. Ew. That was so manly. Yep. Anyways. Um. Moving on. Where did I leave that? Oh. Um. Yeah. So then, fast forward to 2023. August of 2023, Ruby and Jody were arrested. Um. And then a couple days later, charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse which in case you didn't know is a fucking felony um and these charges were brought on because frankie's 12 year old son had climbed through a window of jody hildebrand's house uh, and ran to a neighbor's house asked for food and water they saw lacerations on his limbs um, he appeared to be emaciated, had open wounds and duct tape around his extremities, his arms and legs, wrists and ankle. Um, and that was one thing that I had to pause when I read that the first time, because it was like a punch to the gut. Um, because a lot of times that's how me and my sister were restrained. And so it was really hard to not be too emotionally involved in that, you know, um, especially because this little boy was 12 and he ran away and that just, it did something to me because for those who haven't heard, you know, my story, um, at one point during the abuse, my sister and I had broken out of the room that we were being chained in and abused and beaten and starved and tortured in and ran away. And our goal was to make it to a barbecue shop that was probably three quarters of a mile up the road. I don't fucking know. Um, but we actually only made it to the cemetery because my sister needed to stop because she couldn't breathe very well. You know, um, we made it to the cemetery and then Ruben, um, the guy who participated in the abuse and everything, caught up with us and dragged us back home. And so to hear that this little boy made it, um, I don't want to get, <laughs> I don't want to get emotional, but you know, to know that, um, he ran for help and mm, he made it was a very, again, I, ha I had to take a break reading that, you know, Ugh. um, anyway, so he escaped, he showed up to the neighbor's house and asked for, um, help, you know, um, said that his sister was still in the house, oh my god, I'm like, fucking, trying not to ruin this new shirt. I should have fucking grabbed tissues or something. Um, again, like I hate getting fucking emotional, but it's one of those things where it's like you experience something so similar to somebody else's story. Um, and you find yourself putting yourself in their shoes, you know, and 
this was definitely one of those cases where um, it was hard to read some of the details. And again, it was just like a very bittersweet thing, you know, to know that like in some instances it doesn't work out, you know, like mine and my sister's. Um, Cause I fully, I 100% believe that if we were able to have made it that day and been successful in running away that, you know, it would have, it would have worked, you know, and, um, that she would still be here and it sucks, you know, it sucks. But at the same time, there was like an overwhelming sense of just like pride and love, you know, for a child that I don't even know, but just like knowing that he was in that same position of being the older sibling and seeing like, hey, this isn't okay. And like, we need help, you know, and taking on the responsibility and putting things in motion to get help for him and his sister. And he succeeded in it, you know, and it's like, I hate to know of everything that he fucking went through, but I'm so proud of him for having the bravery to even attempt to run away because having been someone in that position, I was terrified, you know, and like, I can only imagine what was going through his head because what went through my head when we ran away was like, like we were running for our lives because that's what it was. It was you run or you die, you know? And unfortunately in this, in my situation, my sister did die. Um, but I am just, I'm so proud of him. You know, I, that's all I can really say. I'm just so proud of him. Um, and so then when emergency uh, services arrived, they found Ruby's 10 year old daughter in the Hildebrand house. She was also noticeably malnourished, you know, not doing so well, same, um, uh, issues, scars and stuff like that around her extremities and stuff like that. Um, the two children were taken to the hospital and the son was actually treated for severe malnourishment and deep lash lacerations from being tied up with a rope, which again, I had to pause at that because just very similar situations to mine. Um, when they searched the house, they found evidence consistent with the markings on the son. And then that's when the Utah DCS took both children as well as the other two minor children of Frankie. So at this point, she had four minor children, two, her two oldest, Hardy, you know, become adults, moved out, went on with their lives. Um, you know, same situation of what happened with my older sister. You know, um, she went through all the emotions of why the fuck wasn't I there and, you know, things like that. And I hold no ill will towards her because she's an incredible person and I know a hundred percent that had she have known what was going on, we would have never seen Betty and Ruben another day in our lives. She would have taken us immediately, you know? And so I know that she lives with the blame or she blames herself every day. Um, and I just don't think that that's fair. You know, I, I want her to eventually be able to let go of that because none of it was a result of her, you know? Um, so, and then since then a lot more information has come out about the living conditions and the abuse that the Frankie children went through. And these are things like one of the things that I was like, mm, what, um, using cayenne pepper and honey to dress wounds. Um, and then if you, if you watch like the footage of whenever they're finding, um, Ruby Frankie's daughter, She's in, like, like a closet of some sort. I don't fucking know. Um, there were different cell-type rooms that the children were being held in, um, as well as claims made, right, by the minor children and their older siblings, like, shit that happened to them and stuff like that. Um, the two women were held without bail, or bail <laughs> and Hildebrand actually surrendered her license as a counselor, which is fucking wild to me but it's not uncommon you know people who have a position who are in the position to like 
um, see children and have access to children, you know, turns out they're actually abusers. It's not all that shocking, but at the same time, it leaves you guessing, like, who the fuck are these people, you know? Because these people are supposed to be people that are trusted to care for your children, you know? Um, and then once Ruby was arrested, YouTube actually banned her from the platform and deleted um, her main channel that she had and then her backup channel that she had. Um, and then December 18th, Ruby pled guilty to... So they got arrested August 30th of 2023. Fast forward to December 18th, Ruby pled guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse and then pled not guilty to the remaining two counts of aggravated child abuse. Frankie is to serve a prison sentence and will serve them consecutively rather concurrently rather than concurrently. So I don't know if you if y'all know what that means, but so to serve a sentence concurrently means that however many sentences you're getting, right? You serve them at the same time. So say you have a six year sentence and a 10 year sentence, right? You're not serving 16 years. You're serving 10 years because that six year sentence will fall within that 10 year sentence. But if you can serve them cons- or if you serve them consecutively, then that does mean that you will have the six following the 10, right? Or the 10 following the six, fucking whatever. You will serve 16 years instead of 10 years, okay? So um, it's saying here that she will be serving them consecutively. Um, and she will have to serve them one after another, right? Um, and that she can receive up to 30 years in prison, I believe, because I know that Utah has some sort of, like, statute on that and fucking whatever. Um, and then in my deep dive, I actually found her, um, diary, which was just, oh, hang on, my ear's ringing. Somebody's talking shit. Just kidding. Uh, Jody was a mandated reporter as a counselor. Kevin was too. He was a professional out of college. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Too many fucking people failing these fucking kids. And then, you know, also, like, people in the fucking community, you know, It says here that, um, like, through my research, that neighbors had called the cops several times being like, hey, this bitch, sorry, I have to adjust. Um, This bitch is leaving her children home alone, unsupervised, stuff like that, and these people aren't doing anything about it, you know? How many times do you have to be called out to a fucking house before you say, hey, something's fucking wrong? Um, we need to remove these children. So the fact that it was just several people in the community that fucking failed, you know, but also like, I don't know. It's just a lot of people fail these kids. Now, thankfully they're alive, but to know all the shit that they had to endure before they got help, mm, doesn't sit right with me, you know? So Some of the things that the cops could not get a search warrant, they said so in the 2020 special, which is awesome. The Mormons own the court system there, too. See, Utah is a cult. I am now convinced. Maybe I'll do a fucking... I'll start my own conspiracy theory. How do you start a conspiracy theory, you know? I feel like they just fucking pop up out of fucking nowhere. I want to be in the inner circle. I want to know what's all real and what's not, you know? Although they are just theories for a reason. Um, Where did it go? Oh, right here. Okay, so warning, right, for shit that you could potentially react to from these diaries. These are, I I just put down a bunch of things that kind of just stuck out to me um, when it came to shit I saw in her diary. Okay. Um, one of them being R and E have been counting days. R didn't know it was his birthday. Now that one stuck out to me. It doesn't sound rough, but it stuck out to me because as a mother, birthdays are something that I myself look forward to. Um, it just like, 
Check out Mormon Stories. Their interview with Jesse Hildebrand was incredible. The Mormon Church is a, is in crisis over this. Wild. Um, I will check that out though. Um, yeah, it it seems like just something that's super typical. Well, just that's not typical, but it doesn't seem necessarily like out there, right? But that absolutely shattered my heart because I never got to celebrate my birthdays. Um with Betty and Ruben. And again, just so many similarities with mine and my sister's case and this case that I was like, oh my fucking God. It was just kind of like reliving moments in time. You know, it was, it was a bit rough, which is why, like I said, it took me so long. I mean, all of this happened in fucking August and I'm just barely talking about it now. Um, it took me a while, you know, to be able to actually process it and come with a semi-level head then how I originally was. Um, but yeah, um, that just broke me because I look forward to my kids' birthdays because it is my chance, you know, to just really celebrate them and let them, let them know, like, this is your day. It is all about you and you deserve to know how loved you are, you know? And it just like, my kids' birthdays are something that are very, very special to me for anybody who has been there. Um, for birthdays that we've had in Texas, you know, you know, I am above and beyond for my kids' birthdays. I'm usually up until three or four in the morning with decorations and because I want it to be as magical and as special as possible for them. I want them to have the absolute best day ever, you know, and I feel like every year I'm trying to top myself from the year before. There have been a couple years, you know, where we've done smaller celebrations because, you know, we're, we don't have a very big, we now, you know, are building a community here and stuff like that. But when we first moved here, it was a bit rough. We didn't have friends or family here or anything like that. And so they were small celebrations, but they were filled with love, you know. Um, next one was, R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his mother. Yeah, no shit, bitch. The fuck? Like, ugh. And this is where I start to get frustrated because these are, like, things that are coming out of her own fucking mouth. The dumb bitch sat there and said, I'm going to write all this shit down and be like, yep, that makes sense. Yep, I'm a great mother. Get real. I'm <laughs> just, mm, you know? Um, yeah, just... And the fact that, like, she writes things like this and it's like she is still is sitting there like, oh, yeah, it's it's what I'm doing is perfectly fine. It's all in the name of God. Oh, my God. Anyways, um, after dressing her wounds, Jody carried E back to the closet. E did scream and sulk and ask for water. Hmm. I think that one's pretty telling. Um, R's feet are swollen from standing. He is angry and nobody cares. When your soul is dying, nobody cares about your feet. What? The fuck? I... Mm. I'm mad. I, like, I'm, like, trying to find the right words so that I'm not just sitting here fucking raging at 10 o'clock at night. But shit like this pisses me the absolute fuck off. I'm like, well, okay. And to be fair, I'm also incredibly annoyed that I'm still coming up super fucking pale on here. I don't know. It's probably the lighting. I don't fuck. Again, I said on my Instagram stories, lighting is not going to do me justice today. Okay. Um, or tonight rather. I don't fucking know. No, I do know it is tonight. Um, but just when your soul is dying, nobody cares about your feet. Get bit, bitch. The fuck? Oh, my God. Um, Jody asked R, what are you going to say when you see God? Fuck you. R answered, sure. Valid. You know? Um, I put on a pair of boots. I went in and kicked him again. Talking about R. She put on... And in this... Um, part of the diary that she was writing and she had talked about how she kicked him and he wasn't responding the way that she wanted him to respond and he wasn't being obedient um and repenting for his sins so she went and put work boots on walked back in there and kicked the shit out of him kicked the dog shit out of him 
um, to get a response from him. Wild. Um, another thing that she had said to R was go ask the devil to help you go ask the devil to feed you. That was particularly triggering. Um, not really, but it did fuck with me a little bit because Betty used to say that shit all the time. Oh, <clears throat> you want water? Well, since you love the devil so much, why don't you ask him for water? Oh, you want to get up and go to the bathroom and not sit in the diaper for five days in your own piss and shit with fucking bugs crawling all over your legs? Go ask Satan. Oh, you love him. Go ask him. You know, just fucked up shit like that. These just like, again, it, it is religious abuse. That's what it is. Don't get it twisted. It's religious abuse. Um, another one was R is manipulating his hand and wet his pants. Now, a lot in this, she talks about how he has accidents right outside when he's standing in the blistering heat or she's making him stand in hail. Yeah, that was another thing. She made him stand outside while it was hailing, talking about how God was blasting him with hail because God was upset with him and God was disappointed in him and, in him and that was God's punishment for him. Are you fucking joking? Why? She's doing all of this shit to a 12-year-old, okay? Um, and he's having accidents and she's sitting here saying, both of them actually, both of these kids... Um, in the diaries, it talks about how they have accidents. And she's sitting here saying that they're into... <sighs> the fan is on in here. And so my husband's uniform keeps, like, occasionally. It'll just fucking move. And I'm like, no, thank you. Um, anyways, yeah, these kids are having accidents. And she's saying that they're man they're trying to manipulate her and Jody And how um, they're doing it on purpose. And all this other shit. And it's like... You don't think that it's a fucking trauma response? You don't think that these kids are being fucking traumatized to the point that they don't have control over bodily movements? Fuck you, you fucking bitch. I know so many people, you know, sit there and say like, oh, let me, let me be in a cage with her for five minutes. No, give me my nine and put her against a wall. You know? Um... She's an evil fucking bitch. Just absolutely evil fucking bitch. She goes on to talk about how E stood in the rain for two hours. Um, and then sometime in August of 23, she writes, It has been three months since the start of consistent boundaries. She means abuse, not actual boundaries. Um, she talks about saying, R seems to respond to poking, pouring cold water, and towel whipping. Now... That one in particular just absolutely fucking enraged me. So imagine a child standing outside in the blistering fucking heat all goddamn day. He's having accidents. He is, at one point, he fell over, busted his whole fucking face, and she just tossed a rag at him, and then he got in trouble because he was smearing his blood on his face. Are you fucking kidding me? Um... You've got, a, you've got a child <clears throat> who you are starving, depriving of water, being forced to stand out in the blistering fucking heat, so he's likely fucking sunburned. His body is so fucking weak that his ankles are starting to fucking swell from how long he's having to stand. You are consistently telling him that he's the devil, the devil's child and he loves the devil and he made deals with the devil and he's trying to figure out what the fuck to say to please you so that all of it will stop. And then you start whipping him with a towel. I know, I know the majority of people out there, you've, you've had that happen where somebody like winds a fucking towel out and fucking whips you with it. Now imagine that happening to you on bruised, blistered, sunburnt skin. And then you're questioning, you're blaming him for bleeding. Oh my God. Um, I'm. <sighs> and again, I don't want to fucking cry over this shit, but like, God fucking damn. Like you, like. I understand being frustrated with children. It happens, you know, but to 
go to the extent of starving them and torturing them and beating them. And then an, the the part that was just like fucking with me so much was she wrote in her diaries how both of these children were sitting there trying to come up with whatever the fuck it was that she wanted to hear. And then she's putting in her journal, they're not actually repenting. They just want to be comfortable. No, they just want to be loved. It just... Oh, I'm mad. I'm so fucking mad going over this because it's like you've got two children who don't who don't understand and they don't know what it is that you want from them. And they're sitting here going through their and I know because I've been through it my fucking self so many fucking times in order to prevent a beating from happening. I would I would go through a list of things in my head and try my damnedest to tell Betty whatever the fuck it was she wanted to hear from me. What do I have to tell you to stop you from breaking my fingers? What do I have to tell you to stop you from waterboarding me? What do I have to tell you in order to be able to have a glass of water for dinner? What do you want to hear from me to make this stop? You know? And I know, oh my God, God damn. I just don't get it, you know? I don't get cases like this. I don't understand this shit. And, you know, like part of me is glad that I don't, right? But at the same time, like, I want to fucking pick their brains apart and see, like, what is it that is so fucked up with you? And is it something that we as humanity, you know, can change intentionally, you know? And it just, like, I hate that I've always been the person to, like, ask so many questions because I want to know why. I want to know how your brain ticks. I want to know why you make decisions. You know, I want to know why you act the way that you fucking do. And especially when it comes to mistreating children, because why? And it just, it sucks. It sucks to like hear stories that are so similar to mine that are so painful, you know, to read about or do research on and stuff like that, because it brings up my own feelings of things and stuff like that and it just sucks it sucks because no child deserves to go through shit like this you know and god oh my god like I said there would be no fist fighting in this it would just be straight to the fucking head um and I know it's fucked up to be like oh some people deserve to die I believe in my heart with my entire chest that if you harm a child intentionally Fuck you. Fuck you. You don't deserve, you don't deserve to fucking be here. You don't get to ruin somebody's somebody else's life and then live your own. You can you can fucking suffer. I'll make you suffer. Um anyways, and then the last one that I had put on here was I am willing to try anything that would grab his attention. So I whipped him with a belt yesterday. E2. She peed all over Jody's floor and screamed. Yeah. And so once I got to that point, you know, I had some um, more notes that I took on my phone notes. Um, but like it just I don't know. I'm so frustrated because you would hope and think and pray, you know, what the fuck ever that people are adult enough, right, to stop themselves from going to the extremes with children, especially their own children. And I will never, I mean, I'll never understand um, abuse happening to children at all. I especially won't understand it when it's their own flesh and blood. I don't get that. I don't understand how you can look your child in the eye 
watch them scream in pain, hear them scream and cry, watch them pee the floor while you're whipping them, and then keep going. I don't get that. I don't understand that. And because for me, like, with my kids, the sl- like, I, I've, well, I got fucking dragged. Well, I didn't get dragged. I just got some snooty fucking bitches on fucking Instagram about it the other day. Um, you know, like, crying and screaming and whining triggers the fuck out of me at home, okay? And I had said on my Instagram story is one of the things that I just don't do in my house is screaming and whining. I don't do that. Immediately, I will shut it down because... Nine times out of ten, in my house, the whining and the screaming are unjustified. And it's just happening out of, like, you know, kids being kids and, you know, wanting to have their way and, you know, or whatever. Crying overwhelms me in a different way. It overwhelms me in the way of, oh my god, my baby's hurt. I need to stop this immediately, you know? So, I react very differently in those situations. When it comes to whining and screaming, I try different tactics, you know, to get it to stop. I One of my go-tos is just talking to them really monotone and really low. Because you won't be able to sit there and scream and you know, whine and everything like that right here in my face while also trying to hear me and understand what I'm saying. You know, like you you have to bring yourself down to my level in order to be able to hear what I'm saying to you, right? And I, again, reason wherever I can with my children, you know, because although I'm, I understand that I'm not supposed to be their best friend or whatever, I'm also not trying to be a fucking dictator, in my house. Okay. I will reason with them. I will let them plead their case. And in a lot of instances, I change my mind, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You know, and I take no fucking shame in that because I'm trying to teach my children how to properly communicate and how to have conversations with people and how to be well-rounded, emotionally available individuals, you know, because it's not just, oh, I'm raising three boys and a girl, it's I'm also raising three future husbands and a future wife. I'm also raising three men who need to understand boundaries and conversations and respect going into the real world and raising a daughter who needs to understand raising her voice, boundaries, and respect right? I'm, I'm raising these children to eventually grow up and leave my home knowing that they've had a secure foundation. Um, and so I reason with my kids, you know, I let them plead their fucking case. And a lot of times I give in just because they put effort into it. You know, with they, if they come up, if I say, no, we're not going to the park and they're like, but mom, why? And I'm like, okay, plead your case. Plead. Why should we go to the park today? You know, I know in the back of my mind, I'm probably already going to give in, but the fact that they work together and they collaborate and they put their brains together and they each come up with little reasons, you know, like Jensen will say, I want to go to the park because it's super sunny outside and Liam will come in, come in and be like, and the playground's there. And then Selby will be like, yeah, mommy playground, you know, and then Sissy, she doesn't say anything. Um, she just goes outside, outside. She gets all excited. And then, you know, Jensen does most of the reasoning. He's like, yeah, and mommy can sit down on the bench and me and my brothers and my sister can go play and leave mommy alone and we can walk there and we have lots of energy, you know, and they they put their minds together and they plead their case. And I'm like, okay, fine. Put your shoes on. Let's go. You know, um, And I know a lot of people don't agree with letting your children have their way after you've already told them no. Again, that's where I'm different, you know? Um, 
I don't want my kids to be my best friends, but I also don't want them to feel like there's a fucking dictator in their house because I grew up with that shit and it's not fun and kids should be fucking kids. And you know, if you're a parent watching this, there's no fucking shame in giving in every now and again because you only have them for so long. And like I was saying, I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand looking at your own baby crying and feeling fucking nothing and doing everything in the name of God. That is a fucking joke to me. Like, there are so many things that you could be using your religion for. There are so many good things that you could be doing to help people in the world other than using your religion to abuse a child. There are is so much fucking wrong in this world. So many good deeds going undone. And you choose to use God to abuse your children? Yeah, you're right. I'm the one that's going to be burning in hell. You know? I just... And, like, that was... The, and the thing is, is that these poor kids, for the longest time, are probably going to be so fucking scared when it comes to religion. You know, because, and like, I know I was for the longest time, I thought my soul is damned because for years it was fed to me that I was Satan's love child. Okay. It was made very clear that they were not appreciative of the fact that my mother is not white, you know, um, being that she is Mexican and Native American, she is very, very much not white, <laughs> Um, it was very clear very early on, um, you know, and one of the things in some Hispanic cultures, but in a lot of native cultures is the whole not cutting your hair thing. You know, I've talked about the significance of my hair. A lot of, you know, especially, you know, people who know me in life or follow me on my socials or whatever. I am very attached to my hair. My, my hair has very very significant meaning to me and it is very very long okay it goes down to my like past my hips <laughs> um and i i cherish my hair it is very significant to me and with betty and ruben they cut my hair off anytime they wanted to take away my identity they took away my hair and that shit was fucking traumatizing and there were just a lot of things that they did in the name of god you know that stick with me to this day and again being a mixed kid it just added you know to a lot of it and I just, it's hard for me personally. I know some people can go through um, religious trauma and abuse and stuff like that and come out on the other side and still have faith and still believe, you know. And I tried. I tried for so long. I tried. I think it was probably around like 2021, probably, actually, where I was like starting to question things. You know, um, and but then I think like what really solidified it for me was when I was pregnant with my daughter. Again, I respect everybody and their beliefs and, you know, whatever they choose to believe in. I am just not a religious person. I, t I tell people all the time I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. So I do believe that there is something after this, you know, and, and I feel like I have to believe that, um, because I cannot and I'm not okay with believing that the last time I saw my sister alive is the last time I will ever see her again. I cannot come to terms with that and I will not come to terms with that. So I have to believe that there's something else after this. Um, because if there's not, what a cruel, cruel fate that would be. You know, I think too many people suffer in this life to 
not experience some sort of peace, you know, once they've passed on. And I don't know what I believe in. Well, actually, I I probably fall into the category of like a pantheist. I'm very much like, you are the universe. The universe is you, you know, and there's significance to water and earth and stuff like that. And also aligns with a lot of native beliefs, you know. Um, but I don't believe in like one being up there, which I guess is where it would differ, you know. Um, I just, I guess would have to hope that there's something better than this hellhole, you know, because that's what it is. A fucking hellhole. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until I was pregnant with my daughter where things started really affecting me. Ruben died before I could get answers out of the motherfucker. And not only that, but he died with dementia. So he didn't even remember shit and he didn't remember fucking fuck all that he did. And that really pissed me off, you know, because I remember everything, unfortunately. And that motherfucker got to die and not remember shit. And it was at that moment where I was like, yeah, fuck the whole religion thing. Because what the fuck do you mean that there's a reason that children go through all this fucked up shit. You cannot convince me. Everything happens for a reason. I hate that shit. I hate hearing that shit. You cannot convince me that there's a reason for all of these terrible, awful things to be happening to children. You cannot convince me that there is a greater purpose for them somewhere else because fuck that. Fuck that. Watching children die watching all this shit go on in the news, watching your sister die slowly in front of your face will do something to you. And for me, it made me question everything I had ever believed in. And I fought really hard to get out of the whole, oh, um, my soul is damned and I'm going to hell thing. And then I did get out of it and I was going to church with my friends and I was trying to find my way back, you know, and just realized I was a fraud because I'm sitting here telling my friends everything happens for a reason while not believing that a single bit and actually hating hearing that myself. So I was like, okay, it's just time to like come away from this, you know, because I wasn't believing the shit that I was reading. I wasn't believing the shit that I was saying and sharing with other people. And it just felt fucking wrong. It felt wrong. And it felt wrong to sit there and say, oh, yeah, I give all of my life and everything I've accomplished after the abuse and after losing my sister and after all of that. I give it all to God. And it's like, no. I went through mental institutions. I went through children's shelters. I went through foster care. I went through a fuck ton of other major fucked up life events to get where the fuck I am now. And it wasn't because I prayed and it wasn't because I was like, oh yeah, hey, I know you fucking offed my sister, but can you help me? It wasn't any of that. It was because I made a conscious effort to say, I'm not going to be what was done to me. I'm not going to do that shit. It stops here right now. If I, and I never wanted children. I never wanted kids. Fun fact. I despised them. Actually. I was like, absolutely fucking not. My, my friend's kids, my sister's kids. I was like, oh my God, I love you guys so much. You're so fucking cute. I'm not having any. <laughs> um, and then Liam came and my entire world flipped upside down and I was fucking terrified. And the whole reason I didn't want kids was because I was trying to prevent me becoming Betty. I thought there's no way I'm too fucked up. I'm so fucked up. There's no way that I can have a child and be a mother and give this child the life that they deserve. There's no fucking way. And then I don't know. I don't know. It just like, I could never imagine my life without 
my babies, you know, and it gets me all choked up now. And that's why I don't understand it. I don't understand people who are so fucked in the goddamn head that they, that they would do this to their children, that they would do it to any children, but especially their own. How are you so fucked up that you would do this shit? And like to see your baby in pain, to see your baby uh, screaming and crying and to watch them go through all of that and feel nothing, feel no remorse, not feel bad to actually feel pride in what you're doing and calling it discipline or calling it, you know, what the fuck ever to take pride in that. It's sickening. It's fucking, it's, it's disgusting. It's fucking sick. And I'll never be able to understand it. And that frustrates me. Cause like I said, I wish, especially when it came to known child abusers who are in prison for the rest of their lives, they're going to be there for the rest of their lives. So what the fuck did they need their brains for? Take them out, dissect them, see if there's something that's different there, you know? And I know that sounds awfully fucking Frankenstein of me. I get that. But again, there's just, you see all of these correlations between church and abuse. You see correlations between um, generations and abuse, you know, epigenetics that's a real fucking thing, you know, talking about how pretty much you are a product of your environment and it is very rare for people to break that mold and not continue the cycle and stuff like that. And you see all of these correlations, but there's, it's got to be something deeper than that. It has to be a gen, like a, a full on like fuck up in the DNA. It has to be. I don't know. Um, anyways, that was a bit long. And a little wild in some parts. Um, if you are a cycle breaker, I do want to say that I know that it's hard. And I know that it feels like you're up against mountains. I've been there. Um, but keep going. I'm proud of you. I see you. I recognize you. And I'm glad that you're taking the steps to make sure that it ends with you and future generations that will follow you will thank you for that. You know, um, I always say this, um, but if you are somebody who is struggling right now in this time in your life, um, my DMs are always open 24 seven. I may not respond for a couple hours, but I'll get to them eventually. Check in on the homies, let them know you love them. There's no shame in telling your friends that you love them. You know, check in with people. You know, I, I know that it seems like, oh, come on, you know, everybody's busy. We've all got lives. I get it, you know, but it doesn't take long. Send a quick text. Call your friends. Call your family. Whatever. Let them know that you love them, okay? Because I feel like a lot of people recently are just really struggling and it's really hard to find your village and to find community. And especially when you are struggling with some sort of mental illness, it can be hard, you know? And like I said, again, I can relate to that, but check in on your friends, let them know that you love them, you know? And to everybody out there, I hope that you have a great week. Like I always say, I hope you get the monies. Um, what else? I hope that your ex leaves you alone and doesn't call you back. I hope that whatever you have wished or prayed for, for this upcoming week happens. If you're hoping for a positive pregnancy test, all my baby does to you. If not, um, send that baby desk somewhere the fuck else because I don't want it. Um, and I just really hope that you guys enjoy your upcoming week. You know, I hope that this episode was like serious enough for you guys, but also not so much where you're like, oh my God, bitch, what a bummer. Cause sometimes I think that about my own episodes. There was an episode I did, um, like a month ago. And I was literally sitting there like snooze fest. I was so fucking bored. I was so fucking bored editing it. And I was like, this is trash. This is fucking trash. There's where's the personality, you know? Um, but yeah, keep your heads up. Like I said, sometimes you just got to go 
minute by minute, day by day, week by fucking week. You know, as long as you're fighting to see your tomorrow, you will see your tomorrow. You know, um, I don't, I just saw this fucking, I think it's like a fucking song where it was talking about, you know, don't let the rain fool you. Sunshine's coming, you know, and I could not agree with that more. It's hard for me to remind myself of that sometimes that there is good times coming. I just have to wait and see, you know, uh, and it, when you're in the thick of it, it can be really fucking hard. Believe me, I know that. Um, but I have faith in you and I have faith in everybody fighting to see their tomorrow. And I'm proud of you. You're not invisible. I see you. I recognize it. And I'm really proud of you. You know, it's fucking hard and it's a lot of work. And that deserves recognition to anybody, you know, struggling with just daily stressors in life, you know, if you're a dad and you're like, what the fuck? I'm juggling all this shit, trying to take care of my family in an economy that doesn't give a fuck about me. I see you. I recognize you. If you're a mom and you're sitting there feeling like a fucking piece of shit and you're like, oh my God, I'm the worst mom in the world. I see you and I recognize you. And if you're just somebody fucking watching this and you're just having a bad fucking day, I see you and I recognize you and I'm glad that you're here. Okay. So with that, I'm going to get off here. I am going to go cuddle on the couch with my husband and watch some spooky fucking movies as soon as I get out of this spooky fucking room. Okay? Thank everybody. Thanks to everybody for being here. I actually really, truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I know I say that, and I know a lot of people say that, and it doesn't always seem genuine, but I promise sometimes I, like, cry. <laughs> Right. When I get feedback from the community, because I'm just glad y'all are here. I'm, I'm glad to have people here that actually give a fuck about what I have to say. You know, it's a nice feeling sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I love you guys. I am very appreciative for everyone who, you know, watches or listens, you know, whatever the podcast. I really do really, truly from the bottom of my heart appreciate it. And I'm thankful to have you guys here and yeah, I will see you next Friday, this Friday, this upcoming Friday. Today is Friday. I'll see you next Friday. Okay. Anyways, love you. Bye.